Hello and welcome back to part 6 of this video series. We are going to be doing enemy shooting and we're going to be trying to uh, have it so that the game can restart when you die. So the enemy shooting is going to be set with a timer and there's going to be custom signals and after you get killed there's an explosion that gets spawned and the game will restart after one second with the score being reset back to zero. So let's get to it. Okay, so we're going to break this task down into um, three or four basic steps. The first one being that we're going to make the enemies actually shoot some bullets. So let's get started with that part. The enemy is going to want to shoot some bullets. Now, it's pretty easy to do. All we need to do is to say when we're going to shoot the bullet. So we're going to create a timer for that. And then we're going to create an enemy bullet that we fire. It's going to be pretty much a clone of the other one that we have. So uh, we'll start, I think, with the prefab itself. So I'm going to click uh, again on scene. I'm going to make a new scene and I'm going to make this this area 2D again like we did the last time. And we're going to call this one, um, if I can spell correctly, enemy underscore laser, I think is a good enough name for it. Now the enemy laser, we're going to add a child node of Sprite2D so that we can see it. And I'll add that in now so I can actually see um, the size of it before I set the collision shape up. So I'm just going to do this load, go into the Kenny assets, and I think I will choose from lasers. I think I'll choose this uh, this big one that looks quite different to the, the main enemy's laser. So I'll click open. I also don't need to turn this one around because it's round, which is handy. And um, yeah, like the last one, um, this will be too big. So I want to make the scale 0 0.5 so it kind of matches all of them. And then just zooming in, I'm going to add in the collision shape. So search for collision shape 2D and add in the enemy uh, collision shape. I may as well do a circle shape because it is quite circular and just drag that up. Um, not too big, I don't think. I don't want to be hit too easily by these enemy lasers. And the next step for that is just to add a script. So nice and simple. It's going to be called enemy laser, but I don't want it in the default resources. I want it in my scripts folder and click open and create the, uh, we're just going to do what we did the last time. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. And all I'm going to do in process, so that's every frame, I'm just going to say that the position uh, dot x minus equals because we want to go left on the screen and we're going to pick a, a speed and I don't know 20 um oops um 20 and then control s to save for some reason it didn't save in scripts let's save again but there we go so this uh this is now on the enemy laser and what I'm going to do as always is always test so I'm going to go into the game um save everything and the enemy laser scene I think I've put this in the wrong place. The enemy laser scene, I think, has gone inside of scripts, isn't it? Yeah. So the enemy laser, um, this is a quick tip. It's okay to make mistakes. Um, right clicking on this, if you drag and drop it in, sometimes it goes to custard. So you're best to use the move. So I'm going to right click on the scene here and I'm going to use the move function to move it to where I want it. So I put it in the wrong place and I want it in prefab. So I'm going to click move there and that will just move the enemy laser scene across into prefab safely and it checks through the other scripts in case there's a reference. So drag this enemy laser onto my page and then we'll test this scene and you'll see the enemy laser shoots past us. Now it's definitely going far too fast so I really should have tested that but it's easy to fix so I'm going to go into the prefab, click on the script and I think I want this to go way, way slower. So something like, I think five, we'll try that and see what that looks like. So yeah, it's moving, I think, faster than the enemies, but not, um, not too fast to avoid. So let's get those enemies shooting the lasers. So all we need to do for this, uh, I guess back a bit. So we've already added in this explosion prefab that we need to, um, we need to spawn. So it's kind of like the same thing that we're going to do here. We're going to say on ready var and we're going to say laser underscore prefab and then we're going to preload um, the uh, enemy laser scene just like that. So save that and drag this back. It's quite difficult to see when it's 
all in the way. So maybe move this one over too so we can see the script a bit more. So this laser um, prefab, we're going to instantiate just like we did um, with the uh, lasers for the, the main player. So I'm going to, um, but we're going to do this with a timer. So I'm going to right click on enemy and add a child node of timer and then click create. So this will be a, a laser spawn timer. So I like to name things so that I can remember what they are and what their purpose is. So this laser spawn timer, if we go over to the node, we can see, oh, actually, let's just check that the settings are good first. So um, one second is fine. It's not one shot, but we do want it to auto start. We do want it to start at the beginning because otherwise um, we'd have to start to encode and it's easier to just to tick this box. So over in the node here, we're going to hook up this timeout signal. So double click timeout and just hook it back up to the enemy right here. And it's going to be called on laser spawn timer timeout. Sure, big name, but whatever. And we're just going to print something so that we can say um, something like PL. So we know that it's going to work. So what we should see if I run this is we should see this um, POP coming up down here. So every single enemy, uh, every one second is going to fire a laser, hopefully, once we get the script finished. So we hook this up to this on laser spawn timer timeout. So rather than printing PO, we're just going to um, spawn in the laser. So we called it laser prefab. So I'm going to create a, um, a variable called laser, and we're going to say um, laser prefab dot instantiate. So that will create a new one. Then we want to position this. So we're going to say um, laser dot position uh, is equal to the position of the object that is spawning it. So that should be the position of the um, the enemy that's firing this laser. We'll just use that same the same method as we used before, where we get the parent of this object, and then we add it as a child. Um, so that way, if the enemy does get killed, its child laser um, or lasers won't get killed as well, because that might look a bit weird. So I uh, didn't really play around with this too much, but let's just test it and see what it looks like. So we've got our test um, laser here, but these other enemies, as they're coming in, they're starting to spawn these. So because um, they're moving quite slow, I think one second it makes it pretty busy. Uh, so I think it might, um, it might be quite difficult. So I might drop that down a little bit so it's not um, every enemy firing every one second. So just heading into the the timer right in here and go to the inspector and I think I'll um, maybe make it every um, two seconds otherwise it could be just a little bit difficult to play this game. So on to part two. Um, we want the player to detect the collisions with the, the enemy lasers. Um, so I'm actually going to get rid of the ready function so we make it a bit more neat and tidy. Um, all the player does right now is move around. There are actually no detection of any um, of any collisions right now. So we're going to use, because this is an area 2D, um, over in the node here, we can use this area entered. And the enemy laser is an area. So let's just do that. We'll hook up this area entered straight to the player. So the player is connecting from, and it's this on area entered. Uh, that's a decent name for it. And then click connect. And then we should uh, test this as always. So don't forget, we um, want to test to make sure that this works. So I'm going to test this real quick. So hopefully when anything goes into it, it should say, ouch. And this should include uh, the lasers, but it'll also include the enemies. So you see, as we walk, uh, move and connect with the, the enemies, we also get the ouch message come in. So uh, both things should, uh, should kill it. One of the key things to watch here, however, is that um, when I hit my own lasers, um, I'm also getting the out message because the laser fires from the position of the player and that way it's colliding. It's another area that's entered. So we should really check that it's not the laser. Otherwise, we're going to kill ourselves every time we shoot. So I mentioned how to do that before. Um, the simple method that I have found is the best is um, at the top of your code, you just give the um, class name. So I went to the enemy uh, here and I'm given the class name of enemy. 
that way um, when something detects when something uh, detects a collision with it um, we should be able to see if it's an enemy or not we also want the enemy laser to have a class name too so we're just going to do the same thing so class underscore and we're going to say enemy laser so class name enemy laser that way we can detect inside of the player on the look of the player script what the object is so again we've done this before i'm not going to labor it so um if area, so that's the thing that touch does, is um, let's say enemy underscore laser, then we can print um, print ouch. So just quickly uh, testing this again, um, when we get hit by an enemy laser, we should see the ouch come in, and we should also not um, have that when we get hit just by the, um, the enemy itself. So that's pretty good. So what do we want to happen um, when we do get killed? I think what we want to do is probably do what we did with the enemies. Um, with the enemies, we destroy um, we destroy ourselves and we um, make an explosion. So I think we'll just copy this. So um, this is the explosion prefab and we're going to go over to the main player and look at the player script right here and do this paste in. So this is the explosion prefab that we made earlier on. And all I'm going to do is when we're dead, so when we get hit by anything, we're going to instantiate that uh, that explosion. So um, just like before, we're going to save our explosion and we're going to say ex um, is equal to explosion prefab dot instantiate uh, we should be getting kind of used to this and then we're going to say explosion dot position is equal to the position of this object and then we're going to add it in so i did a semicolon there instead of a dot um, the third thing is the um, adding it to the tree so we'll say um, get underscore parent dot add child and then we'll add in this explosion and then we're going to do the destroying of ourselves so we'll just do uh, q3 which will destroy the player object on the scene so that should work so pretty quick but let's just give it a test and see if it works so i get hit by an hit by a laser my explosion prefab gets instantiated and my player gets destroyed so that's a win all right, so the last step is really, we don't wanna um, only give the player one chance to play our game before they have to restart. So um, what I'd like is just restart the game in code. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a timer um, as a child of this game. Um, and then uh, hopefully we should be able to restart the game when the player gets killed. Our main, um, our main problem, however, is that we are destroying the player. Um, there's a couple of ways we could do this and we could get around this. It's okay that we destroy the player. We could, in theory, just hide the player instead of destroying the player. But um, it really doesn't matter which way we do it. The player is going to be destroyed and we're going to restart the game. But we do need the game itself to stay, um, stay alive. And we do need the game to know that the player has been destroyed. So we're just going to create ourselves a custom signal. Um, this has kind of been what all this, this video has kind of been about. So um, introducing signals. So the player, um, right now the player prefab, we're just going to create a signal that we can hook up the game to. So we're going to say signal and we're going to say player underscore killed. So this player killed signal, once I've saved this, um, now becomes available on the player right here. So I can hook this up. Um, to any script. So the um, before I forget, though, um, it's probably a good idea that I emit this signal when I need to. Um, so down here where the enemy laser has hit us and we've queued free, we want to emit that signal. So you'll just say um, player killed dot emit, and then that emits the signal at the right time. So anything that's listening for that, that will be given that signal at that time. So it's easy as that. The game now can um, hook up to that signal. So if we're clicking on the player over here. We see our brand new player killed signals in the node tab. So I'll double click player killed and connect it up to the game. 
um, it's going to create a reference, uh, a receiver method on the player player killed. So we click connect and inside the main game script, which popped up um, down here, uh, we have this brand new uh, function. So this brand new function will get triggered when the player gets killed. So what do we want to do? We want to um, start the timer um, and that's all that we want this to do um, because this game, uh, this game script is going to restart the game after the timer has finished. So we don't have the timer. Now, this is a little error here because I haven't written anything. So I'm just going to put in pass just so we don't have a failure. Um, the game needs a child. So I'm going to add that child node of timer. Timer is already there. Click create. So this timer is going to be a restart underscore timer. This is going to be the timer that we use for the game restarting. The inspector, we can set its properties. So we um, do not want it to auto start and it doesn't matter that it's one shot. Um, and I'll leave it at one second, but you can tweak this value as much as you like. Um, the restart timer needs to be started by the game when the player is killed. So um, just down here, we look at the the path here from here to the restart timer it's just one path down so we use the dollar sign to reference in and we'll just look for the restart timer so there it is so we'll say restart timer and we'll just say dot start and that will start the timer the timer will time out and we need to hook our game up to the timeout signal for this restart timer I know it's a little bit complicated, but you will get your head around this. So this restart timer, if we go up to the node over here, this timeout signal right here, I'm also going to connect this to the game and click connect. And this will just be one line of code. And all we're going to do is we're going to reload this level. And the way you do it is you do get tree, which gets the, uh, the tree, which is kind of like this thing um, and then there's actually a reload current scene function which guess what it reloads the current scene so I know that seems a bit long-winded but it does make a little sense once you think about it and um, the other option would be that we immediately restart the game but then you wouldn't actually see the player explode which would be kind of weird so let's just test this when I die uh, one second later, the whole level restarts. So I still get to play. Um, and then when I get hit by something, like a laser, uh, just like this, then I should blow up. And then one second later, the whole game restarts and the score goes back to zero. So there we have it. That's been a super simple shooter that we've done in six small-ish parts with lots and lots of explanation. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about Godot now and you're able to confidently use the uh, signals that are such a powerful part of the Godot engine and a great thing to be able to get your head around and be able to use, particularly when you create custom signals to communicate up the tree to objects that don't even need to care about these other things being around. You've even done complex things like adding custom connections to signals through code, which is um, which is really good. So you're well placed to be able to make your own games. So good luck, and I hope you've enjoyed this series. Happy coding.